So this will be our starting footprint and our TC will go in this triangle. When you're ready to build this, you'll want to upgrade it right to stone and then we can begin walling it in. For most of this part, we'll be using full walls, but when you get to the raised foundations, use half walls. Now we can start adding in the ceiling, which we want to cover the entire first floor with. We'll leave above the raised foundations open for a sec so I can show you how to place the TC. First add a wall here with the frame next to it. Add a double door in and this is the smallest room you can build for the TC at this point. For the actual TC, we'll build a temporary low wall so that we can easily place the TC all the way into this corner without having to block the wall that will eventually go here. Next thing we can work on is our front entrance. We'll start by sectioning off the raised foundations from the core. The base will have a second floor entrance at this point, so we must extend a few walls up one level. Facing the middle of the base, we'll add in a single door with a wall frame next to it. This is so that when we add doors in that swing like this, we have ourselves an airlock. Now this is the weird part. Since we need a wall frame here for later on in the build, our only option is to temporarily use a double door to seal it in. After that, the last few pieces up top will seal this in. Now let's take a quick look from the outside. Our starter can easily base 4 people in up and will only cost you about 3k wood, 12k stone and a little over 1100 metal frags. Next we'll fill in the inside, but first we need a way up to the second floor. So if we line up with this square, we could build a stone triangle right in front of it. Add a wood half wall to each side and that gives us an easy way to jump up. Now we can make our way inside the base's core, where the first thing we'll add is these three wall frames. First, upgrade them all to stone, and when placing the doors, the first one should open this way, the second one like this, and the third one like this. Ultimately, this gives us an airlock on our bunker entrance in case of an emergency. Next, we can go ahead and grab four sleeping bags, the first of which goes right into this corner. Rotate the second one, and again for the third. A fourth faces the other way like this. To be sure, let's just double check that we can still seal the bunker. It's a good time for a level 1 workbench, so for now we could just use this triangle. Our first garage door should go into this slot here since the TC is behind it. Now if we turn around, we can use this corner to place our first three small furnaces. You should be able to build a window frame afterwards. Now we have all the basics down, but I know what you're all saying. But where's the loot? Where's the loot go? Don't worry, I got you. Right here, boom, our first loot room. So we're gonna use this loot room design multiple times within this base, so I will show you how to build the whole thing right now. In total for each loot room, we'll need four large boxes, seven small ones, four barbecues, and two shotgun traps, if you wanna use the traps. So first, we'll place the large boxes, one in each corner. The barbecues are best placed facing the wall, since they can be placed closer to it that way. What can also help is making the wall frame sheet metal. You can get them even closer like that, but stone is fine. For the bottom, grab the trap and two more small boxes. The trap goes in the back with the box in front. On the bottom shelf, we can get away with an extra box like this. On the top shelf, we literally do the exact same thing, minus the one small box in the front. I do want to add that in this particular loot room, the bottom right large box will block upgrading one of the high foundations, so you will need to pick it up to upgrade it, but it does fit back into place after. So 
So like I said, on the top here, we have the trap, but only one small box. Because if we add the second one, it will block us from accessing the large boxes in the back. Now if we have a quick look in here, we have all of our basics down. It's looking pretty good. So I'm going to blow it up. For this raid, I'm going to do things a little bit different. I'm going to give you a detailed perspective of my thoughts from an experienced raider. So first, I would be able to tell that this entire section is symmetric relative to the center square. This means that this is an extra triangle, which makes the most likely place for TC right here. I would assume all four of these squares are loot rooms on the first floor, but I know there are raised foundations, which makes the bunker entrance right here. I'd assume this center square is the most fortified since the bunker entrance leads into it and it should separate all the sections of the core. This means going through doors is a risk, so the best place to raid would be this spot here. So that's what we'll do. Four rockets ought to do it. That'll give us TC. Then I'll ladder up. Three more rockets at this garage door will give me main loot. And then if we go ahead and ladder back up and jump into here, we have the rest of the base. So if you're the type of group that wants the perfectly symmetric external TCs, this is the best time to at least add in the triangles that hold them. There are 7 squares built off of these spots and the triangles go on the 8th spot. The end product will look like this and I will show exactly how to build it at the end of the video. To continue the build, from the front, we'll be adding in sheet metal honeycomb in all the spots shown. We'll skip upgrading the core for now since it's cheaper this way. But we do still have three things we need to adjust real quick. The first is it's time to break these wood pieces. Second, we want to add a triangle half floor here so that later on we can get a shelf through here. Third, since we need a way up for now, we can come over here and build a roof. Keep it wood to break it later. Now we can go back up to the top and begin adding in all of our honeycomb. Sheet metal, everything. You know what, I was actually wondering, what does everyone think about this new texture for sheet metal? I'm kind of a fan. For this part, I just like to jump down into the honeycomb and come back up for this side. Once you get to the back end here, it's way easier just to jump down and put the walls up from the floor. Now double check that all the walls you're placing here have the hard sides facing the same way because they all do matter. Now let's just have a quick pan around to double check everything is in the right place. It looks good, so next we can come back up to the second floor and simply start capping off each of the pieces on top with sheet metal. Okay, beautiful. Now if we have a look from above, you can see that the base is really starting to beef up. Next we can start building up the second floor, we'll do this with some stone. We might as well start at the front entrance with a double door, then these two walls, and then enclose everything that still has a stone floor under it. For the ceiling, now bases are best secured with the less ways they have up and down. So we'll fill in everything except for one triangle where our ladder hatch will go. Once you do have the hatch, face it this way. If you don't have it yet, you could simply use a furnace to jump up. Now, let's just secure our new front entrance a bit more. We'll add a wall and two more doors. Now behind this first one, it may be wise to place a trap of some sort here because there is always a threat of someone door camping. All of these doors will be replaced in the long run, but I do like to add this third door to the front just in case. Now even though triangle hatches are pretty cool, they are still pretty cheap to raid. So let's go up to the top where we can at least add a door to the path. These types of roof access points will become the new meta for bases of all sizes. With the second floor starting to beefen up, let's start finishing our main core before we expand too quickly. The best place to start this would be our TC room. With the idea of placing a wall here, we first have to upgrade these pieces to HQM and then we can place it in. The TC will be inside a window room, and right next to it we can build our loot room. 
we place two vending machines here. We want to rotate them and really make sure that they are all the way to the left. If we place them right, we will be left with this tiny gap where it's possible to reach the window, the TC, and we can also still repair the window. Adding a vertical embrasure camouflages it pretty well. Now we can add in the loot room, which looks like this when complete. This loot room contains 35 rows of storage. You want to armor the back wall first, but the rest can be done as you gain the materials. With that in, I'd like to place my level 3, which goes in this spot here, but first I must show you where the level 2 goes. So if we make our way to this room, we place our repair bench with two boxes. And then we can add our level 2 on this wall. And there we go. Now while we're over here, we kind of have been slacking on our bunker entrance, so let's upgrade these foundations to HQM. Then we can upgrade these half walls all to sheet metal. Now if we want to stop jackhammer rating, we add these two half floors and cap them off. What's cool about building 4.0 is we can now add a triangle ladder hatch here as well. We want it to face this way, and it even blocks entry in an emergency. For our level 3, we're going to fit it into a single triangle with the rotate trick. Evil Worse has a video on how to do this step by step, but if you place it exactly as I do in the video, it should work for you too. I place the two small boxes underneath it before any more walls, cause space gets limited really quick. If you place the workbench right, you should be able to get this back wall in with no problem. We'll separate the front with the window and embrasure, exactly like the TC, and wow, isn't that a tight configuration right there. Oh, and to ease any thoughts about being able to seal this bunker with the hatch above it now, if you come right into this triangle, you can place the half wall like normal, and if you crouch and jump, you can place the triangle HQM like this. This is actually a really great addition to the game, and from the inside, it obviously works exactly the same. Now if we come into this section on the left here, we can build another loot room. We'll add a half height shelf, a garage door, and boom, 42 more rows of storage just like that. Now since one of our strengths of this design is that our core is very sectioned off, let's do the same with this small furnace room. If a raider finds themselves on the other side of this wall, they have already made mistakes in their raid, so this window trick is invaluable once again. Replacing the sheet doors with garage doors will be the next step. I face them all towards the middle square. Now we'll want to upgrade all of the remaining floor tiles to HQM, and especially armor this half wall, and this too. We'll finish the loot room walls here with some magic. Now the easiest way to ensure all of the ceiling tiles are HQM is simply to go up to the second floor and upgrade everything that isn't. Remember, we have all this space up here to make good use of, which is exactly what we're going to do next. But ah, I forgot, you have to jump in here and upgrade this wall to HQM too. Now where were we? Okay, yeah, the second floor. Okay, so first thing we could do up here is break these two doors. If we turn around, we'll prep a loot room here. We're going to have another loot room this way so we can prep it the same way. There will actually be a third loot room here behind us, but it will be a bit different. So from the right hand side we can build it up like this. Now we can get the half height floor in there, but we'll skip the wall frame. Next we could put a full wall here, which will become our electricity room, but we'll come back to that. Now let's finalize where all of the wall frames will go on our door paths.
Our first one will definitely go here. Now our bunker entrance is here, so we want to separate it from the edge with a door on each side, and then one in the front to the main hall. One goes on the front door path and on the loot room to the right. Now here is the hatch up, so similar to the bunker entrance, we want to separate it on both sides. So once you start investing into multiple garage doors, since they are pretty close to the raid cost of a stone wall, it's time to start upgrading the ceiling to sheet metal. This is simply to avoid splash damage into multiple rooms, kind of defeating the purpose of all the garage doors. Once you get to this point, it's time to upgrade this door at the top as well. With all of this new space, let's come over to our ladder hatch and we'll add in a loot room. With some magic, of course. Just like the previous loot rooms, this one holds another 42 rows of storage. Well, while we're at it, let's go ahead and get another 42 rows of storage from over here. Voila. Now when we turn around, I mentioned earlier that this loot room is a bit different, so instead of magic, I will show you how to build this one the old fashioned way. We'll need 4 large boxes and 4 small ones. On the bottom, we have the 2 standard large boxes, but then we can place a small box in front of each one facing this way. We can even fit one right up the middle. On the top, once again, we have the two standards, but this time we'll skip the sides and only put one small box in the middle. This is because once we put a window frame on the front, if there are too many boxes, we won't be able to reach some of them. Our base is a literal fortress inside, so time to follow suit with the exterior. We'll be adding stone honeycomb to the first floor first, and I've marked each one on the ground already. We can now get rid of this slanty roof, because during this sequence, we will be adding a proper entrance on the ground floor, which is here and we'll come back to. First, we'll finish this honeycomb, with stone walls and all the hard sides should match the video. It's pretty important. This is the final layer of honeycomb on our first floor, with only a couple of minor adjustments to be made later. Using only a single door here now would be a pain, so we'll add a square in front with literally three wall frames on it. This will be expanded upon later, but right now, we just need an airlock. Shop front to front, and double door the double sides. For the front elevator, we can use a furnace until you put a triangle hatch here, and just add the door in after. Now we can jump up here, and we want to make our way around the base and fill in the tops of each honeycomb. When we get back to the start, we can enclose this area up here and build the ceiling. We'll put a wall frame here where a double door will go, and then we can replace this with a garage door. Better to have a garage door here since it leads deeper into the base. Our first floor is pretty much done at this point. Now since we have more honeycomb going around the first floor, it's time we build up the second floor and start adding on the third. We'll upgrade these real quick, and when we jump down we'll start upgrading. We want to sheet metal all the walls around the second floor's exterior, since once we add stone around it, we won't be able to access it anymore. Jump. Now this is good so from the rooftop we can begin adding in the honeycomb around the sides. 
Now once again, the hard sides of each wall has been planned and should be built exactly the same as shown here in the video. If you notice, we always add more vertically as we expand and upgrade horizontally. This is the core idea in base design to keep the raid cost the same from all directions. And with that being said, the second floor is now done and we are ready to add the third. We're basically going to wall in the original footprint plus one triangle on each side like this. It should look like this from above, and when we go down to the center square, we can place our second elevator across from the first one. We'll wall in the back, and our triangle hatch will go up top. It's up to you if you want to add a half height floor here. I will say it does add potential for a trap underneath it. Either way, we'll want to add a wall frame and place a garage door in it. That is our way up, so the rest of the ceiling tiles can all be placed now. I plan on building some individual bedrooms for your group on this floor, but once again, let's go up to the roof and secure our ladder hatch from above. Now our base is an absolute beast, but let's go to our newly built floor and add in some bedrooms. Now this floor is mostly for bedrooms and re-kitting, but I do like to fit these in wherever I can. So we'll go ahead and grab three furnaces and place them behind this glass window. Because it is symmetric, we can add a second one over here. This will total nine furnaces in the whole base now. Now we need to add wall frames to every available slot on this floor. Don't worry, we won't add a garage door to every single one. It's more about stability for our defense floor. Next, we'll place a garage door that faces in towards the square where each one of our bedrooms will go. It's pretty much two on each side, and I like the idea of having them split up. I also like that they, as you can see, have a personal locker and a couple of boxes of storage for each person. With that done, we can build this fourth floor. I call this one the skeleton floor because its main purpose is to raise the defense floor up one more level for as cheap as possible. The best place for our ladder hatch is here and it should face the door when opened. Then we can pretty much seal the rest of the roof off. Now with that done, we can start work on this new defense floor, which I think I can show you better this way. The twig parts are what need to be built off the top part of the base. For the video, I will leave them twig until the end to help with the building. The first thing we'll add will be four wall frames in these exact positions. We can follow that up by adding a wall frame to all of the core slots as shown here. Next, we can add a single door on every slit in the floor. When the doors open, they should all hover over a gap. Next we want to add a window frame with reinforced glass window on every slot that makes up the outermost edge of the top floor. Now all window types will work here, but I highly suggest not using the wooden window bars. Finally we make our way back onto the roof and we're going to start filling in the ceiling. You have to match what goes up top with what's underneath it on the floor. I like to start around the edge and work my way in. Ignore the hatch for now, but next, if you remember where we originally put those four first wall frames, we're going to finish those spots now. The point of these is to block entry from the top, and here we have to use two double doors instead of single doors. The first one goes here and has to swing this way, and in combination with the second one here, the gap is now blocked. We just have to come to the other side and do the exact same thing, and then that part is good to go. 
Real quick, let me just rectify the mistake I made with the hatch. If you place them above each other, you actually get blocked if they are both open. So putting them like this is just wrong. So instead, let's just seal this square and pick a random triangle to put the hatch in. This will work just fine in this configuration. With building 4.0 comes some new features we can add to defense floors. If you put a triangle staircase into this spot here, you gain a lot more angles to defend from and also a bit more cover. I do like to make these sheet metal since they seem to be more solid. I have found 4 spots to do this, which will work well, but this tech is brand new. There is also the idea of using triangle ladder hatches as more places to peek down. In this design, there are four pieces of the floor that are single triangles attached to the base. In this build, I use these places for the triangle hatches. When I place them, I make sure they open to the right. This is actually the reason I built one extra floor below us. If we had skipped that floor, people could ladder up the side and easily jump onto the ladder hatch when it's opened. One more idea I had is to add these ramps onto each square while facing the outside. You can make these out of wood since we already have a bunker and we'll need one stack in the TC for upkeep. The idea is to give even more angles from the defense floor like this. Now stuff like this works out really well when being online rated and constantly trying to switch your angle a little bit. Okay so now let's solidify our front entrance. So what we'll do is we'll add a square to this side with two single door frames and a shop front on the side. This double door will now work as an airlock for both. If we go out the other side, upgrade this wall to sheet metal and then we can add two triangles. We'll put two shop fronts here just for some more vision. For the door leading inside, we'll get rid of the sheet door and the furnace, and then we can add a triangle hatch and an armored door. When we go up to the top, we upgrade this floor and the wall. Now our entrance is much much better. On our second floor, I want to focus this room because it's very important. We'll upgrade these three things to HQM because it's right above the TC. We'll add a sheet metal half wall up here and upgrade these two. We'll finish with an HQM half wall to close it. We also want this single door to be armored. If we make our way through the second floor, upgrade the following things. We can get rid of this trap now and add a sheet metal wall in front of it. It should actually have soft side in. Right in the front here, we'll need to replace the garage doors with armored ones now, or the door path will be a bit cheaper to raid. Adding this many double armored doors is very end game stuff, but that's where we are in the building progression. With these three, you can make the best use of them by having them swing the same ways as you see in the video. What this does is add a nifty little airlock to the front. Now if we go down into our bunker, we can replace these walls with our final three armored doors. We have them swing in the same configuration as above, once again for airlocks. One thing I do like to add down here, if we pick up this sleeping bag, is an auto turret in this corner. You can put the bag back down in this direction and still be able to seal the bunker after. Now on the outside, we can work on our TC's coverage. You could just leave these how they are and try to figure out where to place the ones in between or you can do the following. On the left side of the TC, that is if you walk to it from the base, you can build out a square, then a triangle, six squares, and finish it off with a triangle.
Then from the TC directly to its left, you can build out one triangle, three squares, and finish with a triangle. This will build this configuration, and when you apply it to all the TCs, will give you full coverage. Once you have that coverage, we can place some stone high walls and stone gates. I like to put the gates where each one of the gaps are. Now you can put four gates like I did here, or however many you want. When you do go to place the high walls, keep them the same direction and lined up as the platforms here, and they will line up nice and crisp. Once this is done, you will have both adequate coverage inside the walls and outside the walls, as I will show you right now. It may be possible to build a very, very high twig tower and jump over, but that will respawn most players anyway, so this should work. And that is pretty much the base. There is always a ton of cool stuff you can add into such a big compound, so as always, if you have something to add, I do have a Discord, link in the description by the way, or you can just chat me in the comments below. So thank you very much again for watching the video, and have a good wife.